okay the only facebook ads cause you need so like i said on the screen you can see the only facebook ads cause you need so i'm using facebook ads aggressively for the last uh, past three years for my own business and also for my clients today i'll be sharing with you what i know and what I think you should know about Facebook ads. So this is completely free. So if you appreciate this, do make sure to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below and make sure to hit the bell icon. And also, at the end of this video, I'm going to, to give this uh, slide to you. So, no, no, just for your reference and this whatnot. So without further ado, let's get into the only Facebook ads course you need. So now I'm using Facebook ads, cause uh, Facebook ads this year, and I've been able to generate around uh, twenty thousand ringgit, which is about five thousand dollars in USD. So uh, I know a thing or two about you know Facebook ads. I don't know a lot because you can't really, uh, no one can actually understand Facebook ads well enough, except for Facebook Facebook himself, because uh, it changes a lot. The algorithm changes a lot. What is it? Uh, okay. So now, uh, this is what you're going to learn for today. What I'm going to discuss with you is a few things, which is eight things in this uh, video. It's going to be a long, long video, so make sure you get some popcorn. Okay. So now, first things first, we need to understand Facebook ads. What is Facebook ads and how you use it. Okay. And number two, we're going to discuss about the marketer's mindset, how you change and shift your mindset to become a better marketer by understanding a few key things. And so, number three, we're going to learn about your dream customer, which is uh, the customer that you love to have for your own business, not anyone else's business, but your own business. So this is specifically for you. Now, number four is business manager setup. There's something called a business manager inside Facebook where we use to run our ads. And inside that is uh, the ads manager where we use to you know, set, set up our ads and our images and also our creative and things like that. Okay. <coughs> And then number six, we're going to talk about copywriting, which is uh, words or sentences, whatever you want to call it. I'll just call it copywriting, okay? Or some people call it ad copy, which is we're going to use copywriting to engage with our customer and tell them what we're selling, an offer and things like that, and make them and convert them from a prospect into being a customer, okay? And then number seven is about split testing, how we're going to use Facebook ad to test a few things which is one of the things is our audiences our targeting our copywriting and even our creative creative which is uh, our images and also our videos so number eight is how to scale when you run facebook ads for a few days or even weeks or even months you need to scale your facebook ads in order for you to generate more income but sometimes uh, the roi the return on investment of your ads or we call it ROAS, return on ad spend is a little bit low when you scale so that is something you need to keep in mind beforehand but you need to scale okay so next first thing first like i said before you need to understand facebook ads first the first one why facebook ads so we have a lot of things instagram ads facebook ads and now with tiktok ads where you can run ads on tiktok twitter ads and also linkedin ads but why facebook ads now the first Reason why is because Facebook has the largest social media platform with 2.45 billion active users per month. That is a lot. Okay, that is just a lot. That is like uh, in Malaysia we have 37 million people, so it's like I don't know, a lot more. Okay, it's a lot more. So if you can see here with the, uh, if in the image I screenshotted from statistics.com, number of Facebook users worldwide from 2015 to 2020, it keeps growing. And growing and growing that is why we need to use Facebook because you need to understand we use the platform where the most people are hanging out on which means that uh, maybe in the next five to six years more people are hanging out on TikTok on Instagram or even probably they're going to go to some other new platform so we might change and put our ads there but for the time being right now put your ads on Facebook okay so now the second thing is it provides great analytics like the screenshot I took from social media at lemonade.com. So this is just a few of the analytics you can see. So if you can show you a bit. Uh, so this is the ads manager. So this is where you set up all your ads. So I'm running a few ads. I'm getting a few purchases today. So I've spent uh, 236 for the lifetime for from 23rd March until 12th of June. So you can see today we have 
today only we have 42 purchases but I don't think this is uh, is likely it isn't correct okay so so we have around 10 unique purchases sometimes the pixel is a bit wrong Facebook is bad at tracking purchases okay so uh, what I can tell you is that uh, it can actually take track purchases like this one is tracking uh, at the basket which is at the cart we can also track the checkout and also we can look at uh, analytics such as uh, the frequency the unique link links the link links and also a few other things we can change this to performance uh, you can see okay, let me change this to performance and add clicks okay how many impressions we got meaning how many people saw our ads okay 4,368 impression today and 76 clicks and also the cost per click also the click link click through rate which is how many people saw the ad and how many people actually could click on it to go onto your website okay so just just to show you that Facebook provides a lot of analytics for you to see meaning a lot of statistics for you to uh, to you for you to monitor and for you to understand okay so now the third reason is it lets you target the perfect people now from this screenshot that I took from neopatel.com which is I really respect him Neopatel is a really good marketer you should go and follow him if you haven't before so as an example you can target females who are married uh, in the age of 26 and 45 who likes uh, green cardoon for example yeah? and then you can make it even more specific by saying that uh, she must also like uh, Giri Venicha for example so it's going to be really really specific so some other platform even like Google Google Ads it doesn't let you uh, target people like that so that's why the one of the benefit of Facebook Ads because it lets you target the perfect people it's not really perfect but we call it the perfect people okay so now a little bit on how it works so number one is a paid advertising It's paid advertising please understand that you need to invest some money in order for you to use Facebook Ads if you don't have money then you don't use Facebook Ads you need to invest because uh, business without marketing is like you know uh, living without eating yeah it's easy as that and when it comes to paid advertising it may or may not work so you need to understand that too now number two the more uh, people usually uh, correlate or relate Facebook ad with spending more it's kind of like a uh, pay to play you know when, when it comes to games we, we say it as pay to play so the more you spend equals more results that isn't necessarily the case i have seen case studies with my clients when we spend really really cheap and we got really, really good engagement so it really depends on your copywriting on your creative and also on your targeting or your audience and number three facebook ads is data oriented and it performs well when it fed well which means that if it has a lot of data to use for it to use it's going to perform better okay so which means that sometimes you need to spend a little bit more in order for you to see the data coming in but it doesn't mean that you have to always spend more. okay so next is our second part okay so this the second part of this course is the marketers mindset which means that you need to have the mindset of a marketer in order for you to be good at Facebook ads okay so my battery is running low right now okay so there are five things in order for you to be a good marketer and have the marketer's mindset so number one you need to understand the customer's problem you need to understand what uh, he or she is going through what he or she needs to solve her problems like my, maybe uh, she's having a very good uh, no very bad financing problem uh, maybe he needs to get fit or needs to lose some weight maybe they want to generate more income through online uh, businesses okay so number two understanding the customers need their needs and also number three their wants is different what they need is things like they uh, they really need it for example food we need food okay and then number three the ones what are the customers wants for example getting fit and also losing weight is two different things 
you need to lose weight because if you don't lose weight okay so you're going to get a lot of diseases a lot of uh, I don't know a lot of problems complications in your body number three understanding the customers want for example you want to get fit but if you don't get fit there's nothing wrong okay so those two people will easily complicate it and also get it uh, misunderstood but it's totally different okay so number four grab your customers attention so in order to grab your customers attention your creative and also your copywriting needs to be very very good okay so we call it the pattern interrupt which means that you interrupt the your prospects pattern in scrolling your ad uh, you've done this before, okay? You went onto Facebook and also on Instagram, and then you scroll and you scroll and scroll, and then you see this one image that makes you stop. Maybe it's a, a, a bikini, okay? Maybe also it's a guy flexing his muscles, things like that, okay? Whatever it is, it makes you stop. That's what it is called uh, stopping a customer, grabbing your, their attention, and also pattern interrupt, okay? Also, number five offer your product as a solution now people don't usually do this which is I don't understand why you're a business person you're an entrepreneur you're supposed to sell stuff so why don't you sell something inside your copywriting or inside your ad so this sometimes I just don't understand okay okay if you combine all of these five things you will understand that Facebook ads and also marketing and also advertising is about the customer, it's about them, not about you, not about your product, not about your business, not about your company, it's about them. Please understand that if you understand your customer, you will get more sales through Facebook ads. Okay, so the customer is always right, sometimes. Okay, moving on, next part of this course is who are your dream customers okay so why is it dream customer dream customer is a customer that doesn't babble a lot doesn't mumble a lot with you doesn't cause a lot of ruckus the easiest customer that buys a lot from you so these are your dream customer the customer that you don't have to close really hard you don't have to explain a lot to him or her they just want to buy from you these are your dream customers okay so there are a lot of things that you should know about your dream customer in order for them to be a dream customer. There are six things that I've listed here. Number one is what is his or her name. Number two is where does he or she live. Now, number one, you might think this is weird. Why should I know his or her name? Now, the first thing, if you know his or her name, you understand his or her gender. So, for example, my name is Pai, eh? and then you can see my face, you know I'm a guy. If your name is, uh, for example, Christina, you know that she's a girl. And from that, we can cater our ads for her. Yeah? That's why you need to know his or her name. And then, you create, you can create that name, okay? Uh, like that, just like that. You can create a name, like, okay, uh, my dream customer is Christina, okay? Then, find out what Christina, uh, first thing is where does she lives okay for example let's write here okay so your dream customer is Christina okay so where does she lives she lives in for example she lives in uh, Idaho okay she lives in Idaho so what is his or her occupation so Christina works as uh, mm, let's see uh, let's say I'm selling a product uh, fitness product okay so what is her, her occupation? She works as a manager at her office. Okay, she works in a manager administration. Okay, and then who is his or her idol? So she wants to get fit. I uh, know she wants to lose weight. Christina wants to lose weight. So her idol probably might be uh, what's her name again? Jillian Michaels. No, the fitness instructor Jillian Michael. Jillian Michaels. So that is her idol. And then what TV shows do they watch? Mm. Probably, probably she watches The Biggest Loser, probably she watches a lot of uh, food channel because she wants to learn about uh, healthy food. And then what is their hobby? What is her hobby? Uh, she likes to work out because she wants to get uh, fit and also she wants to lose weight. Okay? Now, understanding all of these things, you can cater the ad specifically for Christina. 
how through copying to images. The copying need to state some of these things. For example, uh, their problems, okay, and then their hobby, which is, uh, for example, we've been working out every day for the last three months, but you have not seen, and haven't lost any weight. So, through that phrase, I'll repeat it again. You have been working for three months, but you have not seen any results or lose any weight. She wants to lose weight. That's this problem. She can't lose weight. She wants to lose weight, which is her, uh, her needs. She, she needs to lose weight. Okay? And then, what is her hobby? As I mentioned, in the front of the center, which is I said, uh, you've been working out. Which is the, that is her hobby for the last, past three months. She likes to work out in order for her to lose weight. Okay? And then, this is an example of a customer avatar. A customer as avatar, sorry, I've been mumbling a lot in this video. Customer avatar is a person that we create which, which relates and becomes our dream customer. For example, in this picture I took from chrishanskins.com, meet Olivia. So in our case just now, it was Christina. So her age is 42. See, why do you need to know his or her, her age? There's a difference between catering and ad for teenagers and also for uh, veterans, okay? We have to call them veterans, okay? People who are, who are a bit older. For example, the use of words. And then, uh, how you cater your eyes, for example, the images and also the videos you use. It's different. And then, occupation. Her occupation is a small business owner for me. When I'm uh, looking for clients, My uh, their occupation Supposedly, they, they need to have a business and also they, at least they need to be an entrepreneur, okay? And her status, she's married, okay? So, this is not all that you need to you need to know. This is just some of the things that you need to know about your dream customer, okay? So, for example, this is really, really specific. Olivia started a small business when her, I can't even read, when her two children started school, okay? And then, uh, what is her problem? Uh, maybe she can't uh, get more sales, I think, from this. I'm not going to read it, it's a little bit it's too small. Okay, so uh, she earns 2500 euros, I think, is that euros? However, it varies based on what she brings in with the business. Her business is her main source of income, okay? So, from this, I think, she, uh, I'm just reading that, that uh, paragraph. I think she has a problem of not having uh, too many sales, yes, uh, problem with more sales. Okay, so basically, like I said before, you need to really understand your customer. If you don't understand your customer, or your, if you don't have a customer avatar and you don't know who is your dream customer, you're going to have a lot of problems with your Facebook ads. Okay, so now this is something I learned from uh, Russell Branson through his book, Traffic Secrets. Okay, through this book. Okay. So in this book, Russell talk about this, about the three core market desires, which is the health, wealth, and relationship. And if you think about it, people like ourselves make decisions based on these three things. We buy things based on health, wealth, and also relationship. For example, in uh, what's, his, what's her name, Olivia's case, uh, she's in the wealth category because she wants to earn more income. She wants to uh, be able to take care of her child, her children, and like our own customer, Vita Christina, it was in the health desire or market, uh, health section of the market, okay, because she wants to get fit and she wants to do sweet, so it's in the health uh, section. Now, Russell even talked about one case where she, uh, he went to a seminar, if I'm not mistaken, and then they showed the Gillette the Gillette uh, shaver or razor, okay? Usually, we're going to relate the Gillette razor to health, but it's actually related to relationship because if you shave and you look uh, a, little more, a little bit more handsome, you're going to get out the girls, okay? So, we, you actually really need to understand the core market desires of your uh, customer and also your, your dream customer and your customer avatar, okay? And now, Business manager setup. Sorry, 20 minutes recording. Okay, so business manager setup. So now uh, we're going to go through it one by one. But before that, is 
uh, that's a step by step point. First one, you need to create your Facebook account. If you have a Facebook account, you can like, you know, you can skip that step. And then number two, you need to create a Facebook page. You need to have a Facebook page before you can create a business manager. Because, well, you can actually create your business manager first, but you later on, you need to have a business, Facebook page to so just create it first. And then you need to create your Facebook, uh, business manager and then create your ad account and then create a pixel. So what is an uh, ad account? The ad account is where you put in your money, doesn't matter to you know online transaction or even your debit or credit card, where Facebook will uh, charge you through your debit or credit card or even your I think it's called a wallet, Facebook wallet. Okay. And then uh, how Facebook charge varies sometimes is when it's called you know uh, threshold when a certain limit is met. Facebook will uh, charge you. Sometimes it just charges you at the end of the month. It really depends on how and how often you use your ad. Okay. And lastly, you need to create a pixel. So a pixel is a length code that we place on our website or wherever you can place your uh, pixel code in order for us to track our customer. Okay. So for example, this is my website. Okay. Digital.com. This is my main website. Okay, so please don't go on this website because the website is in Malay, in our, our mother tongue in Malaysia. Okay, so if you can see, when I myself comes into this website, my pixel is going to track this. Okay, if you can see here, this is a pixel tracker thing, it's a Facebook pixel helper. And then I can check page views, which means that when I land on this page, Facebook is already tracking me. Okay, so this is me. Quite handsome if I say it myself. Okay, and then uh, this is uh, maybe there's a problem. There should be a picture. Here. I'm gonna take it out later. Okay, now moving on. So how do you actually create the business manager? Now you go onto Facebook. Okay, you go to Facebook. You go onto Facebook and then you can go to business.facebook.com. Facebook now, I can't create any more for a business menu because I already have a lot. Okay, I have around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 business menu. Uh, you yourself or anyone, you can create up to 5 business menu. It's five or six. Last time I heard it was five. I think it's five. You can create five business manager, and inside the business manager, you can create five ad account, which means that you have uh, five, then five, you have 25 ad account that you can use. Okay, so basically, what you do is when you first land on business.facebook.com, you can create your business manager. There's a button on the right, right hand side here, which is uh, create a business account. When you click that, they ask you for a name for the business manager and then uh, probably I'm going to put it here okay so I'll see you in a bit I'm going to uh, put the image of the business manager when you create it first okay so see you in a bit okay and we are back so like I said before when you go to business.facebook.com, you'll see this uh, interface and then you're going to click on the create account button. Okay, After clicking that button, a pop-up will show up and then it will ask you to create your business manager account. And then you click next. After you click next, they're going to ask you to input your address, your uh, phone number and also your email and also the link to your website. If you don't have a website, you can just copy. That's why I said before to create your page before. You can copy the link of your page and place it in the website URL section and then you can click continue or next, I don't remember the button there. And then you're good to go. Okay, after you created your business manager, what you're going to do is uh, you go to business of facebook.com again and then you click on the gear icon to go to the settings menu. Okay, after that, what I'm going to show you is to uh, connect your page. Okay. Connect your page and select your business manager. Just 
Okay. Okay. Display settings. Okay. So after you click the gear icon, you land on this uh, page where you can set up your your people and also your pages and also the ad account I mentioned before. Okay, so first thing first, you're going to see your name here, the name of your Facebook Facebook account, and then what you're going to do is go and click on pages. After you click on pages, you can add your page that you have created before. If you haven't created before, which is uh, a little bit of bummer because you need to input uh, the website URL, your real website URL, onto the 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 page where it asks you to the, to put your link. So if you can and please do create your page beforehand. Okay. So what you do is click on add, and then add a page, and then you can search for the name of your page. For example, if I do digital, I can add my page here. And then uh, it'll show up the blue button here, add page, and then just click on add page. To, to add an existing page in business, you must already be an admin of this page. So probably this Facebook account of mine is not an admin of that page, so I can add it. But basically, that is how you do it. And then if you're successful, you can see the pages here. Okay. And then go and click on add account. And then as you can see here, my add account is disabled payment method. Sometimes you're going to have to go through this problem, which is called uh, one of the problem is your ad account will be disabled. When your ad account is disabled, you can request for review. So, for example, if you go to the three line menu here and then you click on Ask Manager, and then you see that you have a message that says on top here that says your ad account has been disabled. Then there will be a link for you to click and ask Facebook nicely. For a review, just go through the process, and then uh, during this or uh, the pandemic that's happening right now, you don't have to put anything uh, as a description or explanation before uh, uh, a month or two prior to this pandemic happening. You need to put some explanation or some description of what what uh, you think happened to your ad account. So now. You don't have to say anything. You just click on the link that Facebook provides you. You click on the link and then you open up a new page. And then on that page, you just select your ad account. And then you pick one of the choices. One of it is uh, that you're going to choose is, uh, I don't know which policy that I violated. Just choose that and then click on as for review. That's it. Simple as that. Okay, but back to this. Uh, you need to create or make an ad account. If you don't have an ad account, ad account yet, just click on Add, and then click on Create New Ad Account. Okay, and then choose a name for your ad account. For example, uh, Facebook Ads Course. And then what you're going to do is choose your time zone. My time zone is uh, Asia slash Kolumbo. And then your uh, currency. Like I said before, Malaysia Ringgit is our currency. And then click on Next. And then Choose my business, which is the name of your business manager, and then click on create. See, so if you can create a message will appear that say uh, you have created. Okay, or first you need to choose a person who is able to change anything inside the ad account. So just choose your name, and then click on manage ad account, then click on sign. And then, uh, this is the message that I said before. Well done, and then uh, the number here, and then click on close. See, you can see the ad account right here, Facebook as cost. Okay, so now next thing we're going to do is uh, going, we're going to create a pixel. Okay, so now you click on data sources, click on pixels. Okay, so there's a lot of pixels here. First thing you click on add. Okay, so you're going to give a name to your pixel. The best thing that I can suggest is just to put the name of your pixel, uh, sorry, the name of your website, okay? For example, my website is FIB uh, Digital, okay? Then, uh, if you have a website, just, uh, you know, put the website right there, right here. If you don't, just click continue, okay? So, it's going, it's going to create the pixel for you, and then uh, set the pixel, uh, no, continue managing my business, okay? So, you are done with the uh, business manager setup. You have created your page or add your page. You have created 
your ad account okay so for instance before this you were running uh, your ads on your personal account you can add it here too just click on add uh, uh, oh, sorry this is pixel I was talking about an account okay go to your ad accounts again okay and then click on add and then click on add an ad account so uh, what you're going to do is you open your ads manager for example this one and then you search for your personal ad account for example this is my personal ad account you're going to go to the link section here and then copy the code after act equals okay copy this and go back to this section where you want to add your ad account click on add add and then account and then you paste okay and then click add ad account so we just add your ad account here but i'm not going to do that because it's going to ruin, ruin my ads today okay next uh we're done with pixel we're done with business manager setup next is the good part which is your facebook ads settings how do you create Facebook ads that are good? Okay, so now you're just going to go in through this. First thing first, you go to business.facebook.com slash ads manager. Okay, business.facebook.com slash ads manager. And then if you have a lot of ad account like me, you're going you're going to have to choose which one first. If not, if you only have one, you don't have to choose. Okay. So now you click on create okay and then it's going to open this interface so there is a lot of things that you need to understand here but there are just a few things that you're going to actually use okay for example if you have a website you're going to use traffic or conversions if you don't have a website you're going to use lead generation or uh, messages okay you can use video views if you're go if you're looking for people who are going to watch your videos, but if you're just looking, for example, you want to generate leads for your business. For example, your business is uh, you have a chiropractor practice. Okay, what is it called? You own a chiropractor business. Okay, and you want leads for your business, but you don't have a website. You can use lead generation or messages. Okay. So, all the setups are the same except for lead generation and messages. Traffic and conversions are the same. So, in this video, in this course, I'm going to focus on traffic and also conversions. So, basically, I hope you have a website. Okay. So, I'm going to click on traffic. Okay. And then, my, uh, usually, I name my campaign like this. I'm going to name, for example, lead generation lead gen and then dash and then the name of the objective that I'm using okay and then dash and then also the date which is the date uh, today is uh, 9 of June okay so what you need to understand like I said before I'm going to show how to use traffic and also conversions okay so traffic and conversion probably just traffic because conversions uh, you need to have traffic first coming into your website. So just use traffic first. Okay, so probably I'll create another whole video just for conversion ads. So for now, we're going to focus on traffic. So traffic is when you ask Facebook to find people who will come onto your website and uh, do what they want to do on your website. For, for conversion ads, we're going to focus on one thing. For example, you ask Facebook to find people who are going to come onto your website and then uh, uh, come onto your website and then you can specify what they're going to do for example they become a lead uh, they leave their email and their name and become uh, one of uh, your database or your email list or you can specify and tell Facebook to find people who are going to purchase from your website okay so conversions we can specify uh, make it specific and specify and tell Facebook what kind of people and what they're going to do on our website with traffic you can't but it's a good start with traffic okay uh, with lead generation uh, like I said before 
we're going to ask Facebook to find people who are going to become leads. But with lead generation, the fun part is you do not have, you don't need a website because uh, we can create a form inside Facebook where people can uh, leave their email, their name, their phone number, and things like that inside the Facebook, which is very good because we're not going to have something that we call a drop-off point, which is sometimes when people come on the website, you have a few pages before the the person can leave your website. Sometimes they are drop point on the first page. Sometimes they are drop off on the second page. Okay. <coughs> and messages is is basically straightforward. You you ask Facebook to find people who are going to messages message you on your page. Okay. So now, uh, this is my usually how I name your campaign. You can name your campaign however you want. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect anything. Okay, <clears throat> and now CBO, CBO or campaign budget optimization, uh, it works like this. Okay. Oh, first thing first, I forgot to mention that uh, what we are doing right now is on the campaign level. There are three levels inside uh, creating a Facebook ads. There are three levels. The first one is campaign level where we choose our objective, marketing objective, which consists of awareness, consideration, and conversion. The next level is called the asset level, where we can, uh, where we set our targeting, our audience, our uh, placement, where we want to show our ads, uh, and also our budget and the schedule. And the last part, or third part, is the ad part, where we, uh, what we use, our copywriting and also our uh, creative, our images and also our videos. Okay, so. This is the campaign level. Now, at the campaign level, we can set uh, our budget, which is is called campaign budget optimization. So basically, how it works is like I'm going to find a picture for you. Campaign budget optimization because I totally forgot about this. Okay. So okay, this is an, this is an image from S Espresso. Not now. Okay. Uh, we copy this. So like I said before, I'm going to give you this uh, slide so you don't have to worry a thing. Okay, just duplicate this slide. Okay, so this is campaign budget optimization. So, oh, by the way, I took this from uh, Ad Espresso. No worry, I'm going to leave the uh, sources below. Okay, so this is a campaign without campaign budget optimization basically you have to set your budget on each ad set so we don't usually create one campaign one ad set and only one ad usually we create one campaign and a few ad sets and also under that ad set we have a multiple ads okay so if you do not turn on which is I mean when you turn off the campaign budget optimization you have to set the budget on each ad set for example, on each asset, you you set ten ten dollars, ten dollars, and also ten dollars. Uh, after a few days, you get a few conversion people coming in. Uh, the conversion is not going to be equal. Probably, uh, perhaps asset one performs better than asset two. Like in this image, asset two performs the best. But when you turn on campaign budget optimization, you're going to set a budget. On the campaign level, okay, like this. For example, you set thirty dollars, and then after a few days, Facebook is going to do all the hard work. Basically, Facebook is going to find out which ad set is performing the best, and then it's going to take most of the budget and give to the most performing ad set. And the least performing ad set will have the least budget. So basically, like that. So, uh, with so probably. To make you understand better, without CBO, we treat it equally. With CBO, we treat it, uh, we treat the best player and give it all we have, uh, something like that. Okay, probably you can understand just from seeing this uh, image. Okay, so should you use or should you not use campaign budget optimization? You need to use campaign budget optimization because after this, uh, you need to have it. You need to use it anyways because Facebook is going to make it compulsory for everyone. Okay, so just start using campaign budget optimization right now. Okay, for example, my budget is one day is one hundred, which is basically around uh twenty dollars, uh, twenty five dollars. Okay, 
So it, the budget you need to put depends on how much you are willing to spend. If you're willing to spend only ten dollars a day, so be it. Depends on you. Okay. So if you click on edit, you have a lot of things here. Okay. Low scores, cost cap, and also bid cap. Just leave it be. We've tested a lot of things and lower scores as well. So click on continue. Okay. And then. On this section, just let it be on website because we're going to uh, ask Facebook to find people who are going to come onto our website. Just let it be on website. Okay. So now, uh, offer and also dynamic creative. Just let it be because it doesn't really work well. Dynamic creative is when you uh, give Facebook a lot of images, a lot of headlines, a lot of top writings for it to test out, and then you will find out the best performing, and you can test it up to two hundred fifty. Uh, a combination of ads, okay, but it doesn't really work well nowadays. It doesn't work well before, okay. So now on the audience section here, when you click on edit, on the location, click on this tab. Uh, we'll put our drop down and just choose people living in this location, okay. And then for the location, for example, we're going to look back on our customer avatar, okay. For example, we say Christina lived. Uh, lives in Idaho. So we're going to search Idaho. Okay. Now, probably Idaho is a little bit too, too big, a little bit too big for your ad. Uh, let's say you have a chiropractor business, and then you want to target people only in Idaho. So, and to make it more specific, only in Boys, Idaho. Okay. So we're going to choose Boys Idaho. So, uh, the put you have to uh to monitor, okay, or take into consideration this potential reach. The more the reach, it's not always the better, okay. Sometimes, uh, the lesser the reach, the more specific your audience is going to be, <coughs> and the less cost it needs. But sometimes, uh. Uh, is going to be less of a list. So basically, we're talking about quantity versus quality. With less potential reach, it's going to be a lot more quality. With more potential reach, it's going to be a lot more quality, uh, quantity. Okay. So now, uh, voice I don't know. Probably you're going to see miles here. If you click on the drop down, and then you can track it down to 70 kilometer, which is about uh, 10 miles. Okay. So now we're up to 330,000, which is really really specific. Okay, and then with uh, age 25 and above, this is just an example. Okay, you need to test, you really need to test it out. Like I said before, Facebook ads is uh, paid advertising, it may work or it may not work. So, what differs from may work and may not work is testing. You need to test, 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 and test more. Okay, so Jessica is woman. So this is my dream customer or my customer avatar, which is I'm searching for woman living in Boys Idaho. Uh, her age is between 25 to 50 because uh, probably this age range is when people starts to have uh, back pain, uh, neck ache, and things like that. Okay, and then woman. I'm only targeting woman because probably, uh, for example, I have a chiropractic woman's chiropractor office. A business and I am a woman so I just want to target woman that is a, just an example I am not a woman okay and also you can place a targeting here in this section called detailed targeting okay so uh, detailed targeting you can click on browse here and then uh, you can click on demographics you can see by education financial life events parents relationship and work so I'm just going to search for parents and so all parents Balance and all. Okay, so now three hundred and thirty thousand becomes thirty two thousand. Now this is a bit too small. Sometimes it's just a bit too small. But like I said before, if you have a brick and mortar store where you want people to come in, this is very good because you you're only searching for people living in the specific section and only parents. This is very specific. So we are going to let it be. Okay, now scroll and you can edit your languages here. For example, if you live in a country like Malaysia, we where we have a lot of uh, uh, we have a lot of races here. 
uh, I'm going to put only English. Okay. So what this means is people who their app and also their Facebook is not in English, they are not going to see my app. <coughs> okay. And then placement, just leave it on automatic placements. And optimization for ad delivery. Uh, we have two. If you click on drop down, we can use uh, we can use four, but the two that we're going to use the most is landing page views and link list, which is uh, the better. You have to test it out because sometimes link list is better, sometimes landing page views is better. Okay. But uh, link clicks, you're going to get more people coming in onto your website. Landing page views, you're going to get less people, but more quality people coming onto your website. So again, it's a matter of quality versus quantity. Okay. And then uh, show more options when you get charged. You can click on edit. You can choose impression or link click. If you can't choose link click, which means that uh, your Facebook account is quite new, and you need to follow Facebook <coughs> Facebook's policy for a few weeks before you can use link click. And then now you can click on continue. I need to see my battery. How much percentage we have? Okay, we're on seven percent. We're good. Okay. So now. Uh, uh yeah and by the way just now we were on the ad set level and now we are on the ad level so if you can see on the ad set name i don't really give a name i just put it as the age range and probably i'll just put voice high level just like that just for me to know what is my targeting okay and also probably match married uh, sorry all parents this is just for my references. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Then, next thing, uh, like I said before, if you click on continue, we're going to go on to the ad level. <coughs> okay, the ad name. So, like I said before, you can use uh, place an ad name, or you, you don't really have to because it doesn't affect anything. Okay, now for the Facebook page, you need to choose your page. You need to choose, I have a list. You need to choose your page. Huh? That was hard to pronounce. Okay, uh, this is my page, uh, by So you can choose your own page. You need to choose your own page, not other people's page. And then, uh, you can also directly show your ads on Instagram. If you if you haven't connect, if you haven't connected your Facebook page with your Instagram profile or your Instagram business profile uh, page. You can always use this, use select the page, which means that your ads will show on Instagram, but people can click on the left hand top left hand side where usually we click and we can you'll be taken to the business page in Instagram. Okay, so now uh, when you scroll a little bit further, you can see three things create ad, use existing post, or use mockup. Most of the time, we're going to use create ad because we don't want our page to become uh, a place where we sell. Okay. All Facebook page usually, uh, with my preferences, my Facebook page usually is where I produce content and provide value to my customers. Okay, and now we also have a few selection here with uh, inside the format section. We have carousel, single image or video, or collection. Most of the time, we're going to use single image or video. Carousel is when you you have a multiple images and you can scroll along them. Collection if you use when you use multiple images, but it's all in one section. Okay, so most of the time we're going to use single image or video. Okay, <coughs> so now uh, just let me on single image or video, and then click on add media. You can choose whether you want to add an image or a video. I'm going to use an image. Okay, uh, yeah, this is for my lead gen course, sort of a course. It's usually uh, it's actually an access to a Facebook group where I place videos inside it. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to upsell you on anything because this is Emily. Okay, so now the primary text. So this is the part where we discuss about copywriting. Okay, so copywriting. Uh, when talking about copywriting, you need to uh. Mention your customers or prospects problem. Okay, I'm just worried about my phone dying. We're on six percent. Probably uh, we can stop on copywriting. Okay. So with copywriting, there is a few formulas such as IDA or the past formula. Okay. With IDA, A is attention. Okay. 
high is interest how you build up interest uh, with uh, inside your company the desire this desire and a is action okay so for attention you need to really grab your prospect or customer's attention for example having problems uh, losing weight okay so we're straight how do I put it uh, we just uh, the first line of your copywriting, you just mention your customer's problem or what they're facing, having problems losing weight or another way to put it is are you looking to lose weight but you, you don't want to stop eating McDonald's for example, okay, that is one way and then the attention part or we call it the headline part is the most important part inside your copywriting because it's the first part that your customer or your prospect see so make sure it's compelling and it will make your customer or prospect stop okay around five percent okay so now i is for interest how you build up interest and must relate to the headline okay so for example interest uh you've been working out for the has three months but results okay so mine uh, do not mind the time because I don't have time right now what if you can reduce your weight uh, Okay, so this is how I build the interest. You need to relate your interest to your headline. For example, the headline is, or the attention part is, having problems losing weight. And then the interest part, you've been working out for the past three months, but you're not seeing any results. And then you can just put in some emojis just to make sure that people see that this is not really an ad, but actually it's an ad. Okay, uh, the best ad does not seem like an ad. Okay. What if you can lose 30 pounds in two weeks? Okay, this is a little bit of a hype, but uh, most of the time it's not really good. So make sure that uh, you really understand the product and how how fast it works. But, uh, it's really good. Then if you want to get good at copywriting, I suggest a book by Sh uh, Sean Bosler. It's an ebook right now. It teaches you how to write uh, seven pages of copywriting. I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link below. Okay, so I'm not uh, affiliated to it. Just I just know it's good. Okay, but if you can lose three pounds in two weeks, uh, sounds like unreal. Well, now you can with this X Y Z fat burner. Okay, how do you spell fat burner? Okay, if this XYZ sounds like unreal, but now you can with this XYZ fat burner. Okay, and then just put in some uh, FAB, we call it FAB, which is features, advantages, and benefits. For example, made with natural nutrients. I'm just making this up here, okay? Uh, one model plus. Okay, so this is a little bit of uh, FAB which is features, advantages, and also benefits. The features is is made out of uh, natural nutrients, and also the uh, advantages is that one bottle lasts for three months, and also the benefit. Uh, proven to lose weight in two weeks. Okay, and then how do you create desire? You create desire by giving them an offer. Uh, the first three people. Okay. Get your. Get your today, and receive a fifty percent discount on your first purchase. Okay, that is desire, which is most of the time with desire, we just 
uh, create an offer, give them an offer on the table. Because if you don't have, you don't have an offer, it's going to be hard for you. And then action. Okay, for action, uh, you tell them what to do. We call it call to action. We tell them what to do, what to click, and where they're going to go next. Okay. Uh, click the link below and get your today. Okay. Then put your link your website.com okay okay so that is AIDA okay so uh, you put your link there and then what you need to do is I'm just going to do it to look a little bit more professional <laughs> just copy your link and then place it at the website URL section right here and then you might want to click on the preview URL to make sure that uh, it works okay so this is not going to work because, uh, okay, <clears throat> oh, oh wow, there is a website called yourwebsite.com. I didn't I know that before, okay, but uh, yeah, just make sure it works. So, in this case, it does work. I was expecting it was, was not to work, okay. So, let me just check if I'm recording right now, okay. So, <clears throat> okay, we're golden. Okay, so now back to the copywriting section. So this is an example of using the IDA formula. I'll show you another example in the slide. Okay, let me open the slide for a bit. Okay, so like I said before, you can find the download link to the slide in the description below. Okay, so again, this is the IDA formula. A is for attention, I is for interest, D for desire, and A is for action. Okay, so this is an example I took from copyhackers.com. Don't worry, I cited them. Okay, so uh, this example came from Mosbar, which is uh, if I'm not mistaken, their product is Mosbar. It shows you how many uh, traffic your website has driven. Okay, so now uh, Mosco or Mos, uh, this website in particular drives attention uses the it uses the IDA formula. So it grabs attention by using drive more traffic to your site. Which is, is catering to people who wants to drive more traffic to, your web, to their website. It specifically said the want. We want to drive more traffic to the site. It doesn't always have to be the needs. Sometimes it can be the wants. So again, this is where uh, knowing who your dream customer and your customer avatar is so important. Okay, and then it continues with, it continues with the most post subscription saves you time by giving you an all-in-one set for SEO research and an analytics tool that help increase your search engine visibility and keep you ahead of. So that is the interest, which is we want uh, the interest here is to save the time. Okay, saves you time by giving you an all-in-one set of SEO research, which, which is we want all the tools that we can use to gather SEO uh, and analytic tools in one place. <clears throat> and also, it helps you increase your search engine visibility. That is the most important thing. Now, again, coming back to this copywriting, okay, so what if you can lose 30 pounds in two weeks? So that is the interest part, okay? The interest part is where... We give them, we tell them what they want to hear, which is if you want to uh, uh, make more money. For example, would you want to make more money in 30 days by using this one particular format? Okay, that is the need. Okay, their interest. We 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 need to pick their interest. Okay, and then they continue with the desire. Your competitors. Moscow is backed by industry leading data and the largest community of SEOs on the planet. It doesn't always have to be an offer. Sometimes, uh, something that it can uh, improve a person's design. For example, most Pro uses most Pro is backed by industry leading data, which means that when when you get most Pro, you get this. Okay, you need to understand that. For example, okay, uh, this is also another point, another good way to uh, show or to pick their design is by giving them an offer. Another way is to show that. Uh, uh, this product has been used by a uh, thousand people before, for example. <clears throat> and then, uh, action is straightforward. Uh, it's straightforward. Okay, so people use this uh, on this website, it's just the button. We use this call to action like click the link below and get yours today, for example. The most important thing is to have a specific call to action. If it's a button, it's a button. If it's a link, tell them to click on the link. Don't tell them to do elsewhere. 
Okay. Now another example is from uh, Apple's website. Okay, for the product iMac. So it uses the attention with Retina. Now in colossal and ginormous. So they grab the attention in colossal and ginormous. We we're, we're going to be thinking like, what the heck does that mean? Okay. So it grabs our attention. Now the second part is the interest. The idea behind iMac has never be, has never wavered to craft the ultimate desktop experience, the best display packed with high performance processor, graphics, and storage. So the interest for us here is we want high performance processors, graphics, and also storage. So basically, they understand their customer avatar and also the the dream customers. So we need to understand that before doing any kind of advertising on Facebook, especially Facebook ads. <clears throat> now, uh, to pick the desire of the customers, like the revolutionary 27-inch 5K model, it delivers such spectacular image quality that everything else around you seems to disappear. So the desire is giving you uh, an image of what's going to happen when you get, uh, when you buy the iMac. Okay, adding up to the most immersive iMac experience yet, and another big beautiful step forward. Okay, so that is the IDA formula. Now the next formula is the PAS or PASS formula, which stands for problem, agitation, and also solve or solution. So I'm just going to straight to the example to save time. So this is an example taken from also copyhackers.com. So you should go and check out copyhackers.com. There are a lot of tutorials and also a lot of uh, value there. Okay. So we start off this formula by using straight to the problem. Okay, so for example, here from Ramit Sethi's website, problem, we know that our dream job won't just fall into our lap, so that is the problem. Okay, so for example, in our own uh, product, uh, let's take, for example, this fat burner, we know that, uh, let's let's use another uh, different example. Okay, losing weight is not an easy thing to do. Okay, that is the problem. Losing weight is not an easy thing to do. Okay. Losing weight is not is not an easy thing to do. Okay, so that is an example of the problem. Just put it out there. Put the problem out there. Okay, and then you agitate them, make it feel worse, make it bad for them. For example, here, and that the best jobs usually are listed on any job boards. You agitate them. But when tired old job hunters fail us, we end up frustrated, embarrassed, scared of wasting time, and paralyzed by the fear of being stuck. This is very good. An example of agitation. Okay, so how do we agitate with this puzzle? We know that being uh, bigger than others is a bad thing. Then probably I'm going to list out a few complications 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 and diabetes diabetes is just around the corner waiting to waiting for us waiting to say hello <coughs> Okay, so how do we agitate it here? We know being bigger than others is a bad thing. Okay, I'm not going to use fat, even though that is the correct word, but uh, sometimes Facebook doesn't like words like that. And then how I agitate is that complication and diabetes is just around the corner waiting to say hello, which means that it can happen anytime when you're uh, uh, fat. Okay, so then we provide the solution. What if you can lose 30 pounds in just two weeks? Yes, with this product, you can. Okay. So now, another version of PAS is called PASO. We just add an O to it. Okay. Let's look at this uh, example here. So now the problem is, let's face it, most people hate the software they use at work. So that's the problem, people hate the software they use at work. So they agitate it by business software is clunky, expensive, hard to start, and frustrating to use. 
that's one one agitation there. Countless hours are wasted trying to customize these solutions and they often require expensive professional services to get everything to work. That's the second agitation there. In the end, the solution becomes so complex that the businesses need to hire full-time employees to babysit the software. That's the third agitation. Now, you can edit it as much as you want, just don't go overboard, okay? Now, the solution they give is, at Freshworks, we believe your business deserves better software. Software that's ready to go, easy to set up and use, and requires minimal customization. In a way, uh, they're countering the objections that they have uh, put on the table before. <clears throat> okay? Now, the, uh, the thing that I said before, past becoming peso is O, which is the outcome. Today, over 150,000 companies trust our software to run the business. We believe it's just the beginning. So an outcome, you can put a testimonial, you can put uh, how many people have bought your product before, and also how long, probably how long you've been in business. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in this instance, probably I'm going to put uh, the solution. Uh, it's easy to use. Just take a spoon, spoon every day and let the magic happen. Uh, don't take our words for it. See what. Lisa has to say. Okay, and then I'm going to put the testimonial here. Testimonial. Okay, and then dash Lisa boys I the hole. the hole. Get yours today by clicking the link below. Okay, so this is an example of how we use the pass formula okay now that covers both cooperating formulas now here we can see that it says write a short headline now a headline appears here not where my mouse is okay so this headline is also important okay so what I like to do is just tell them how they can solve the problem using my product for example uh, lose 10 lose 30 pounds in 14 days with this fat burn <coughs> okay something like that okay now uh, you can put a description below description here thousands of people have tried and proven us right okay and then you have a section here call to action. You can choose a lot of call to action. For example, download, get offer, get code, get showtime, get more, etc. etc. Now, the best call to action button is that relate directly to what you're trying to do. For example, if you get you you running an ad uh, to get leads, you might want to use sign up. If you're running an ad for people to download an ebook, you might want to use the download button. So in this instance, it's probably better if I use learn more versus if I use get show times because it's it doesn't relate at all. Okay, so you need to basically we need to think uh, logically right here. Okay, so we are now done. So I'm just going to delete this part here. I'm going to use the cooperating above the IDA formula. Okay. Okay. So now after you've done with your copywriting, after you've done with your uh, image selection and also your headline and also your uh, make sure your website works uh, your description and so your headline scroll down okay make sure you turn on your pixel okay so if you don't know how to set up a pixel okay I'm going to show you briefly right now okay to set up a pixel uh, it's going to take a it's going to take a lot of time because different websites uh, have different ways of using the Facebook pixel. So probably uh, I'm going to make a different video. Uh, be sure to subscribe because you will, uh, and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified when I upload a new video specifically on Facebook pixel. Okay, because this video is already uh, an hour long. Okay, so just turn on the pixel. 
even though it's going to turn red like this because uh, it hasn't been installed yet. Okay, so if you get a message that this ad may not run, your ad can contain any can't contain any false or deceptive claims. We suggest that you have a look at our advertising policy, etc. etc. Just click on confirm and then your ad will go in a process called in review, just like this one. This is a my one of my clients' uh, account. So we'll go through a process called in review. If I refresh this and see if it's already active or not, it's still not active. So uh, okay, just like this one. Okay, so this is pretty expensive one I to cut since it's doing it for an to cut. But we have a funnel, so that is one more thing that we need to understand. The concept of funnel. Okay. So uh yeah, if it's active, if it gets approved, it'll be active just like this one below. Now we are done with the normal part. This is the simple part of an ad. Now we're going to go into split testing. There are a few ways to split test, then you need to understand what you should test. There are four things that we usually test. The first one is the audiences, which means that we test the age, the genders, and also the targeting that we put inside the digital targeting. The next one is our copywriting, uh, our ad copy, long versus short, or even different formulas. For example, if your first ad, you use the AIDA formula, your next ad, you can use uh, the PAS formula. And then we can test creatives, images versus videos, and lastly, we can test the placement, Facebook feeds versus Instagram story, or even uh, just using messengers platform okay so this is an example of how you split test you have a campaign and under your campaign we have multiple assets uh, we recommend at most three per campaign okay and then in each asset you can see the difference for example in asset one the age and also the placement are different uh, the placement are different uh, the countries okay you you as you can also for asset two the keywords are also different for the first asset, we just use small business Saturday and auto entrepreneur. The second asset, we use uh, Mary Porello, Ali Brown, and also Success Magazine. And third asset, we use Mary Smith or Facebook social media today. So that is how you test. Okay, so the way to do it is you just duplicate. Okay, you go to the campaign that you want. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'll just use uh, mine. I'm going to leave this. Okay. Okay. So we want to just duplicate the campaign that we, we see that based on data reading that this is performing. So how do you know that the ad is performing? So the easiest way to know, the easiest metrics that we usually uh, look at uh, if you're using traffic. I'm just going to search for some traffic. Okay. Okay, for example, uh, we're looking at uh, link links, of course. Last time. Okay. So we're looking at link clicks, we're looking at cost per link clicks, and we're also looking at click through rate. If you're not seeing any of this, you can just click on the columns here, on the columns, and just you can choose based on uh, performance and clicks. Okay, so this is one of the best way to look at your Facebook ads. For example, uh, let's look at this one, okay, uh, this one, this particular one. Okay, so for each click, we just we're paying thirty nine cents in RM, so just like a 40, 40 divided by four, uh, one cent or ten cents, something like that. Okay, so basically it's cheaper in USD. Okay, lot cheaper. Okay, so we just need to look at the data here. We got seventy eight clicks and we got one point four one percent click through rate okay so for click through rate we're aiming for two and above at least two so if we see 1.41 like this we have to change a few things for example with CTR we're focusing uh, on CTR or link link uh, click through rate we're focusing on the copywriting and also the image mostly on the creatives which is the image and also the video okay so if we have CTR like this 4.35 percent we can uh, proceed to look at another uh, data which is also here the cost per click okay so it is better if you want to look at the unique cost per click and also unique click through rate which is you can do by when you click on columns here you can go to customize columns okay and then you can search for unique 
and then this one unique click link click through rate and also unique cost per link click at all cost per unique link click okay both of these and then you, you're just going to click on apply then you can click on the columns again and then you can save this with a name for example uh, Pause. And okay. All right. So we're done, and we can scroll to the end. You can see here, unique CTR. Okay. So the uh for the this one, the same ad, the CTR we're getting is one point four one percent, but the unique CTR is one point eight zero percent. It's usually like that. It sometimes is uh, higher than your CTR. Sometimes lower. For ins uh for instance, this one, this one is lower. Uh, this one is higher, this one is higher, this one is higher, this one is higher. So we're just going to look at the unique click uh, CTR. <coughs> and also the unique cost uh, or cost per unit link click. You can see here, uh, the cost per click is 39 cents, but the cost per unique link click is 41 cents, which means that someone clicked twice, okay? Which is we don't want to be reading a person clicking twice. We just want to be reading data that shows a person clicking once. Okay, so just focus on things that are all unique. Same goes to when you're reading purchases and also leads. You click on columns, you can also go back to customize column, search back unique. Okay, and then uh, all of this, for example, uh, purchases, you can click on unique, and then you apply you end up like this. You can look at unique purchases and cost per purchase like this. Okay, so that's how you read data. And all of if all of that matches, for example, my KPI, which is Key Performance Indicator or Key uh, Performance Index, my KPI is that uh, any link uh, cost per link click cannot exceed 50 cents. This is uh, exceeding 50 cents in Malaysia is quite uh, expensive. I know in uh, in the US or anywhere else, uh, I think below five dollars or one 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 point five one dollar fifty cents is uh, uh, the maximum for you guys. So I'm not really sure. It depends on where you at. <coughs> okay. So my KPI is uh, the cost per link click needs to be below fifty cents. So if it's uh, fifty cents is the maximum, it cannot exceed fifty cents. Which means that uh, if I have an ad that the cost per link click is below fifty cents, I can already scale because I know that ad is working. So how do you scale? Okay, so if I go back to this, sorry for, uh, if you saw my WhatsApp. Okay, so just now uh, we're looking at split testing, sorry. So how do you split test? Okay, you can do that by just duplicating. Okay, so this is when you want to duplicate the campaign. If you want to use the same campaign, you just click on the campaign's name. And then you can see that I have uh, two assets here. I can just click on whichever one of the assets and just click on duplicate. It will create another ad set. This is when we're going to test. Right now, I'm testing the uh, interest, which is also the targeting. So, for, uh, for example, this one, I'm targeting all the um, uh, business mentors or business uh, people we look up in the business market here in Malaysia. Uh, the second one here is look like audiences. This is for another video. Uh, too many things to discuss. Okay. Then this one probably I'm going to use something that's pretty broad. For example, digital marketing. Okay. And then I'm going to name the asset for my easy reference. Okay. And now you can see that under one campaign we have three assets named digital marketing, look like audiences, and also uh, C4C2, which means that all the business mentors here in Malaysia. In the ad set, you can also duplicate the ad if you want to test directly test the copywriting and also the creatives. How do you do that? You just click on here in the action menu and then you click on quickly duplicate. Okay. <coughs> so now I'm just going to rename this hashtag. hashtag two. Then I'm going to change the copywriting here. Yes, and then after that, I'm just going to Click on the campaign's name here to make sure we select everything and then go back to clicking all the ads. Make sure that if it says for here, you're selecting all the ads. Just click on publish. It's going to uh, 
go back into the review process and Facebook going to review your ad. If it passes the review process, it will be active. If it's not, it's going to be disapproved. Or you're going to get a message here called accept error or not approved or something like that. Okay, so we're done with split testing. Now, next phase, how to scale. I've mentioned just now a few metrics that we need to consider before we scale. Okay, I'm just going to write here quickly. Okay. Okay, this one. Metrics to consider, which is, if you remember, I mentioned just now. The first one is uh, link clicks, cost per link click, click to rate, uh, total number of leads, and also your sales if you're using sales. And then, if you have sales, uh, you can monitor your ROAS. Okay. So ROAS stands for return on ad spend, which means that if you spend one dollar, how many dollars you get back? If you spend one dollar, you get two dollars back, which is pretty good. Okay. If you spend one dollar and you get zero point five back, that's pretty bad. You're losing zero point five. If you get one, uh, if you're spending one dollar and you get one dollar back, you're breaking even. Okay. So for link leads, uh, we're focusing as many as we can. For CPC, you need to have a KPI, your own KPI. For me, is under 50 cents for you probably will be around uh, below a uh, dollar fifty okay so now for click through rate we're aiming for uh, above two percent for the click through rate okay now leads uh, we just want as many leads as we can and uh, sales also we want as many as we can now for OS we're aiming for at least three what's happening right now okay at least three okay three so the formula for OS is uh, at spend divided by sales so for instance example you spend uh, three hundred dollars and you got around uh, 600 back okay. so now you're going to get your uh, ROAS so which is about okay. oh wait I messed up the formula so it's sales over expense okay, uh, sales we need buy and spend so uh, we're gonna get two okay. six hundred okay sunset is two which is you take six hundred we're gonna get two okay so your OS is two so we're aiming for at least three which means that every dollar you spend you get three dollars back because you're gonna take one dollar and give it back to add the s gonna take one dollar uh, for your uh, profit and you're gonna take one dollar into inventory okay so that's why we're aiming for at least three now for example all of this you get a pass for each and every one of these metrics for example your cpc is uh, below 50 cents or below a dollar 50 cents your CTR is above 2 and your ROAS is pretty good at, at least 2 or 3 then you can scale there are a lot of methods to scaling I would really would like to show you just 2 because uh, too many ways of scaling you're not going to do any of them okay so the first one is direct scaling which means that for example we have performing, performing ads right now okay so let me go back to today Okay, so I have a performing ads right now, which is this ad has 46 purchases today and two ringgit and 66 cents per purchase. Now I'm going to go and click on edit. Now I'm going to go to the ad set level. Okay, so uh, whichever that gets the most purchases, for example, entrepreneurship and also purchases. Uh, sorry. Uh, influential people and also entrepreneurship. I'm gonna click on edit, and I'm gonna raise the budget from 20 ringgit per day to probably uh, 40 ringgit per day. Now, 
you cannot be too aggressive when you uh, scale using direct scaling. You need to be uh, a maximum is a hundred percent increase from the normal budget. For example, if it's twenty, the max is uh hundred percent is forty. We recommend below hundred percent below below twice the norm the actual budget. So meaning that you don't exceed 40. At least 35 is good. 35, 40, 40 is the limit. Do not go overboard because if you scale too aggressive, Facebook will have a hard time in using the budget because probably like uh like now it's like uh, 7 or 8 p.m. And if you use uh, if you scale right now, which is uh, the the normal budget or the previous budget to ring it has been used up until this time, and then you increase, Facebook is going to have a hard time in using the budget for the rest of the day. So one thing, uh, the timing is also important. Be sure if you want to scale, uh, scale it at midnight, because uh, that's when the uh, performance and also the data is reset, is resetted. So now you can scale it during that time, or if you want to scale it any time of the day, just don't go overboard, don't go twice the previous budget. Okay, so just for example 40, and then I'm going to click publish. That is the direct scaling method. In direct scaling method, is when you duplicate the campaign. Okay, duplicate campaign. <coughs> and then you raise the budget for uh, you can use uh, you can raise the budget for each and every one of the asset or just the asset that you know is performing for example just now the, the asset that was performing is uh, influential people and also entrepreneurship so I can just go to this and then raise the budget it that way okay, it's 40 this one is 40 okay so now everyone uh, every other asset is 20 so i'm just or i can also delete all the other asset and just leave this asset uh with uh more of my budget for the rest of the day and also for the rest of the week uh, i don't know for even for the rest of the month and then you click on publish and we're done okay basically that is all you need to know with facebook ads there is a lot more to it such as uh, facebook ads funneling and also uh, custom and also lookalike audiences where you use to uh, reduce a lot of your costs. So probably this will be a series and also I'm going to link other videos, other videos uh, with custom audiences, lookalike audiences uh, and even the Facebook ads panel. So, but this is the only cost you need. You don't have to go out and pay for anything. Okay. So I think that is all from me. Be sure to like this video if you think this video is beneficial to you. Subscribe and also click on the bell notification icon below to make sure you are notified whenever I upload a new video. So until we see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.